what is going on youtube my name is mehul and welcome to this video in which we're going to discuss about front end back end and full stack development and find out who you are what you actually do or maybe what you want to do if you're not clear about that so let's get started starting off with the front end developer who is a front end developer anyway or how do you qualify yourself to say that yes you are a front end developer as a front end developer you see there are quite some technologies involved but if you go back to basics if you boil it down to basics you just need to know html css and javascript that's pretty much it for the front end development part now you see that most people won't actually call you a front end developer if you just know html css and javascript you need to know any associated framework with it as well like angular or vue or react or maybe any other framework you like right but the core essence is that you only need to know html css and javascript because angular vue react all these are actually abstractions over javascript what's actually running in the browser is just these three core technologies you need to know in order to call you uh, call yourself a front-end developer the, it is always nice to have um, knowledge of developer tools like chrome dev tools or firefox web developer tools for doing profiling optimizing your code already existing code debugging your javascript so on and so forth right but this is again not a strictly requirement for front-end front-end web development to call yourself a front-end web developer you only need to know html css and javascript once you know that once you know html css and javascript you could pretty much call yourself yes you are a front-end developer right there's a new candidate WebAssembly, still very much in development but um i'm pretty curious to see where it goes right um you won't really find a lot of buzzwords right now i'm um, going out like WebAssembly is a front-end technology you won't find it at the moment but WebAssembly opens doors for pretty much any language to be used as a front-end language right now it is strictly restricted to only these three html css and javascript but WebAssembly opens doors for languages like c c plus plus rust um you know anything pretty much to be used as a front-end developing framework right for example, I guess Microsoft has this framework called Blazor, which is written in .NET or C Sharp or something, right? Which is not written in JavaScript and it is a front-end framework. So it is interesting to see where WebAssembly goes. Moving on, we have our backend developer. Well, who the hell is a backend developer? So you see, as a backend developer, you get to choose from a lot of languages, right? You could pick up any language like Node, PHP, Ruby, all these languages. And in the brackets are their associated popular web development frameworks, right? There could be another framework you want to use or you might be using, but these are the popular choices. So um, as a backend developer, you usually pick up um, mainly one or maybe two languages and know them till a very good depth usually you would find backend developers using a single language in a um, you know in a very professional manner but they also do know a bit more languages they can they could use on backend right so golang is a new candidate here which uh, which again is a general purpose language just like python but still you can write web servers in it right so you see that as a backend developer, not only languages, you need to work with databases as well. Now, databases are primarily of two types, SQL and NoSQL. So SQL databases include MySQL, PostgreSQL, and SQL Server. NoSQL includes MongoDB, DocumentDB from Amazon. Um, it's actually launched, I guess, a, a couple of weeks ago, which is pretty much similar to Mongo only. And Redis as well is a NoSQL, but usually used in caching systems. So you see that to be called as a backend developer, what I think you should do is go ahead and master any language in depth. And obviously, if you are front end developer already, then um, Node.js obviously gives you an added advantage that it's just JavaScript on the server. So yeah, you could cover that aspect from front end itself. But you could pretty much pick up any other language you like, right? Once you do that. Make sure you have um, worked with a database as well, whether it's uh, NoSQL or SQL, right? 
in no, SQL most popular choices, MySQL and NoSQL, um, it's MongoDB, right? Everyone knows. So pick it up, use a backend language, connect with database. And uh, if you just want to be a backend developer, you could pretty much create a very basic front end page, which just, you know, performs a couple of Ajax calls or stuff. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Once you are done with a language on backend, you have a database solid grasp. You know how to work with a database, insert data into it, retrieve from it, update data, stuff like that. I think you could call yourself a backend developer, right? But usually you won't find people calling them as a backend developer because of the so many languages, the choices available, right? So you would be called as a node developer or PHP developer, stuff like that. But still, yes, you are in the backend developer group. So let's let's carry on. Coming to full stack developer. So what is a full stack developer? Well, you see that a full stack developer is a guy who can switch into front end and back end guys anytime, right? So if you are a full stack developer, you know how to work with front end. If I place you in the front end team, you should be able to work as a front end developer. If I place you in the back end team, you should be pretty much be able to work with a back end team as well. So you could pretty much say that um, an isomorphic JavaScript application can be developed only by a full stack developer because a full stack developer knows that how that HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all that React stuff works on the front end and as well as backend technologies, how Express and all that stuff works. So an isomorphic JavaScript application, if, you're, um, if your team is working on an isomorphic JavaScript application, that is probably just consisting of only full stack developers because you know that in, in that particular application, you're writing a combined logic for backend and front end, which requires the knowledge of both the worlds, right? So you cannot have separate teams working on that, right? Apart from that, you do have a requirement for like a version control system. You should be able to work with that. Well, it's not really strictly a requirement for full stack. You should be in general be able to work with Git and, you know, GitHub, GitLab, any, anything you prefer. Plus, there's an added advantage if you are aware of a little bit of DevOps, right? Continuous integration, development, setting up all those pipelines, you know, running tests, writing your own test other stuff which is again not limited to just back-end or front-end developers but is it's it's more of a general concept but yes you are a full stack developer if you know very well a single back-end language a single or a couple of back-end languages once you're proficient in that you have worked with databases you know how to work with front-end technologies which involves only html css and javascript at the moment and yeah you are a full stack developer then so yeah that's all for this video let me know what type of developer you are in the comments below and what do you think you want to be or you know if you are looking for any advice or anything any suggestions let me know in the comments below and if you like this video well like this video and don't forget to subscribe press the bell icon thank you for watching i'll see you then in another one